Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is the second half of De Morgan's Rule. And actually, I should have mentioned this in the first lecture, but sometimes De Morgan's Rule is called De Morgan's Theory or De Morgan's Law. They're all the exact same thing, and there are two parts to it. The first part we covered last time, remember that we found out that you could express P and Q also as not not P or not Q, which meant that if you have the more complicated expression on the right, you can just simplify it to being the very simple expression P and Q. Now we want to learn about the other half of De Morgan's rule, and that half deals with this expression. So this expression says not, not P and not Q. I want you to take a moment, look at that, and use the same application of distributing the negation that we did last time and figure out how we can rewrite this in a much simpler way. So go ahead and pause this lecture and think about that for a moment and write it down in the comments section if you have a guess and let's see if you get it right. Okay, so if we distribute the negation, instead of having not P in the first part, you have not not P or just regular P. If you flip the caret into being a wedge, you have the or instead of the and. And if you distribute the negation all the way down to not Q, you get not not Q, which just becomes regular Q. And so all told, that means you have P or Q. And as it turns out, these two things are logically identical. P or Q is the same thing as saying not not P and not Q. And once again, we can verify this using a truth table. So here I have filled out all of the columns, and we know for columns one and two that we have to come up with every single combination of truth values for the two simple sentences, P and Q. And then if we go through this, well, for the first part, we have not P and not Q, so we just flip the first row, or rather the first column and the second column, and create columns three and four that way. And then for column five, we have the conjunction of columns three and four. So we look for where that's both true, and they are both true in just the fourth row. So in the fourth row, not P and not Q are both true. So not P and not Q is true. For every other row, it's false. Then for the sixth row, or rather the sixth column, we negate the fifth column. So we have not, not P, and not Q. So we just take the fifth column and we flip the Fs with the Ts. So we get T, 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 F. So true in the first three rows, false in the fourth row. And then we can compare that to P or Q. Remember that P or Q is true as long as one of the component parts is true. So if we look all the way back to columns one and two, we see that in rows one, two, and three, at least one of those two expressions is true. And in the fourth row, they are both false. So that means P or Q is true in the first three rows and false in the fourth row. And if we compare the last two columns, we see that they have identical truth values. Regardless of the component parts, P and Q, regardless of those truth values, the truth values of those last two columns for P or Q, as well as not, not P, and not Q are completely identical. And again, that means that if you see that really complicated expression, not, not P, and not Q, you can replace it with the much simpler expression P or Q. So to recap what we've learned about De Morgan's rule, again, De Morgan's rule rules because it takes these really complicated things and makes them very simple. Again, it's going to be your best friend, and when in doubt, use De Morgan's law. So that wraps up our journey through the two versions of De Morgan's, and in the next lecture, we are going to start applying these replacement rules. Join me then.